My parents paid $100,000 for my sister's wedding, but couldn't spare a dime for mine. Then I discovered the ultimate family secret. I'm Julian, 28F, and I need advice about a situation with my sister Amy, 32F, and her parents. It's a complicated story, so bear with me. Amy and I grew up in Millbrook, a small town in upstate New York. Our dad, Robert, 58M, owns Millbrook Hardware, the town's go-to store for all things home improvement. He started it from scratch when he was just 25 and built it into a successful business. Our mom, Linda, 56F, has been teaching third grade at Millbrook Elementary for over 30 years. She's known as a fun teacher who always goes above and beyond for her students. Growing up, Amy and I had a typical sibling relationship. We shared a room until I was 10, which led to plenty of arguments over space and borrowed clothes. But we also had our good moments, staying up late to watch scary movies when our parents were out, or teaming up to convince them to get us a dog. We succeeded when I was 8 and Amy was 12, a golden retriever named Max who's still with them. As we got older, though, our differences became more pronounced. I was always studious and driven, getting straight as without much effort. I joined every club I could, debate team, student council volleyball. So senior year, I was class president and valedictorian. Amy, on the other hand, struggled more in school. She was smart but easily distracted, often forgetting homework or skipping classes to hang out with friends. She was more into art and music, spending hours in her room drawing or playing guitar. Our parents tried to be fair, but looking back, I can see how their treatment of us differed. So they praised me effusively for every accomplishment, while Amy's achievements were met with more subdued reactions. When Amy got in trouble for skipping school, they ground her for weeks. But when I got caught sneaking out to a party senior year, they let it slide with just a stern talking to. After high school, Amy left for art school in New York City. I think she was eager to escape the small town and our parents' expectations. But meanwhile, I stayed local, attending the state university just 30 minutes away. I majored in business, with a vague idea that I might take over dad's store someday. During college, Amy and I grew apart. Ta. She'd come home for holidays, but always seemed eager to leave. She'd talk about her cool city friends and exciting art projects, making me feel boring in comparison. I threw myself into my studies and internships, trying not to feel jealous of her seemingly glamorous life. After graduation, I started working at Dad's store, helping to modernize their systems and expand their online presence. Amy stayed in the city, working various jobs in galleries and cafes while trying to build her art career. Our parents were proud of both of us, but I could sense their extra enthusiasm when talking about my work at the store. Five years ago, Amy called with big news. She was engaged to her boyfriend, Mark, a fellow artist she'd met in the city. Our parents were thrilled. Mom immediately started talking about wedding plans, and Dad offered to pay for everything. They told Amy to dream big and not worry about the cost. The wedding planning consumed our family for the next year. Mom and Amy were constantly discussing flower arrangements and seating charts. Dad seemed happy to write checks for whatever they wanted. The final event was at a beautiful vineyard upstate with 200 guests, a live band, and a five-course dinner. Amy looked stunning in a designer dress, and everyone said it was the wedding of the century for our small town. A year after Amy's wedding, I got engaged to my boyfriend, Jake. We'd been together since college. He works as an accountant in town. So when we told our parents, they seemed happy but not nearly as excited as they'd been for Amy. There was no talk of them paying for anything. Jake and I decided on a smaller wedding, thinking it made more sense financially. We had about 75 guests in my parents' backyard with a local caterer and a DJ. It was nice, but definitely no frills. I tried not to compare the weddings, but it was hard not to notice the difference. Amy's had cost at least $50,000 from what I could tell, while Jake and I spend about $10,000 of our own money. I told myself it was because they'd already spent so much on Amy's wedding and couldn't afford to do it again. Still, it stung a little. Last month, everything changed. I was at my parents' house, helping mom clean out their home office. We were going through old files when I came across a folder labeled AM Wedding. Curious, I opened it. Inside were financial documents related to Amy's wedding, and I was shocked by what I saw. It turns out my parents had taken out a $100,000 loan to pay for Amy's wedding. The documents showed they were still making monthly payments on it five years later. I couldn't believe it. They'd gone into serious debt for Amy's wedding then claimed they couldn't help with mine at all. I confronted my parents right then and there. At first, they tried to brush it off, saying it wasn't a big deal. But when I pressed, they got defensive. Mom said Amy needed the boost more than I did. She talked about how Amy had always felt second best growing up, and they wanted to do something special for her. Dad chimed in, saying they would have helped with my wedding too if Jake and I had wanted something bigger. I was furious. I told them it wasn't about the money itself, but about the blatant favoritism and dishonesty. Why did they feel the need to lie about the wedding costs? I offer to pay for everything for Amy, but nothing for me. I said I felt betrayed and manipulated. Their reaction made things worse. 
Mom started crying, saying I was trying to ruin Amy's happiness. Dad got angry, telling me I was being selfish and ungrateful. He even suggested that my jealousy of Amy was exactly why they had favored her with the wedding, to try to make up for my attitude toward her over the years. I left their house feeling hurt and confused. I called Amy to talk about what had happened, but she took our parents' side. She accused me of snooping and trying to cause drama. She said I was just bitter that her wedding was nicer than mine and that I should be happy for her instead of complaining. Jake has been supportive but doesn't fully understand why I'm so upset. He thinks I should try to patch things up with my family for the sake of peace. But I don't know if I can get past this level of favoritism and deceit. I'm at a loss for what to do next. Part of me wants to demand a full explanation from my parents and an apology. Another part wants to cut off contact entirely. I'm worried about damaging my relationship with Amy even further, but I'm also angry that she's dismissing my feelings. Am I overreacting to this situation? Should I try to let it go for the sake of family harmony? So or do I have a right to be upset about the unequal treatment and dishonesty? How do I move forward with my family after this? Any advice or outside perspective would be greatly appreciated. Update 1 Thank you all for the supportive comments on my last post. Your insights and advice have been incredibly helpful as I've tried to navigate this situation. A lot has happened in the past two weeks, and I wanted to give you an update. After taking some time to process my emotions, I decided to try having another conversation with my parents. I hope that if I approach them calmly, we might be able to have a productive discussion about why this hurt me so much. So last Saturday, I went over to their house to talk things through. Unfortunately, it didn't go as I'd hoped. As soon as I brought up the wedding loan, mom got defensive. She accused me of trying to ruin Amy's happiness and said I was acting like a spoiled brat. She insisted that they didn't owe me anything and that I should be grateful for everything they'd done for me over the years. My dad wasn't much better. He said that Jake and I make good money and didn't need their help while Amy and Mark were struggling artists who deserved the extra support. He talked about how proud he was that I was doing well in life and suggested that their favoritism toward Amy was because she needed more help to succeed. I tried to explain that it wasn't about the money itself, but about the inequality and dishonesty. I asked why they felt the need to lie about the wedding budget and hide the loan from us. They claimed they were protecting Amy's privacy and didn't want me to feel bad. But that explanation doesn't make sense to me. Why offer to pay if they were going to hide the true cost? Things escalated when I brought up other examples of how they had always favored Amy, even before the wedding drama. I talked about how they'd praise her effusively for small accomplishments while taking my achievements for granted. How they'd been much stricter with me growing up, punishing me for things they'd let slide with Amy. My mom started crying, saying I was being cruel and ungrateful. My dad told me I needed to leave if I was just going to attack them. As I was walking out, my dad made a comment that stopped me in my tracks. He said, well, maybe if you were actually our daughter, we would have treated you the same. I was stunned. I asked what he meant by that, but he refused to elaborate, just telling me to get out of his house. I left feeling dazed and confused, my mind racing with possibilities. As soon as I got home, I called my older cousin Lisa. She's always been like a big sister to me, and I hoped she might have some insight into what my dad meant. When I told her what happened, she was quiet for a long time. Then she revealed something that turned my world upside down. According to Lisa, when I was a baby, my biological mother, my dad's first wife, passed away. My dad remarried my current mom when I was about two years old. She illegally adopted me, but I'm not her biological child. Amy is their biological child together. I was speechless. Lisa apologized profusely for keeping this from me all these years. She said the family had agreed never to tell me, wanting me to feel like I fully belonged. She only knew because she overheard her parents discussing it years ago. After I got off the phone with Lisa, I immediately called my parents. I demanded they tell me the truth about my birth mother. At first, they tried to deny it, but eventually they admitted everything. They claimed they never told me because they didn't want me to feel different or unloved, but that their actions over the years tell a different story. Suddenly, so many things about my childhood make sense. Why Amy was always treated as special and fragile. Why I was pushed to be perfecto all the time. So why there was always an undercurrent of tension in our family that I could never quite put my finger on. I feel like my entire life has been a lie. All those times I felt like an outsider in my own family, I was right. I'm struggling to process the fact that the woman I've called mom my whole life isn't my biological mother. And I'm angry that this huge part of my was kept from me for 28 years. Jake has been wonderfully supportive, but he doesn't really understand what I'm going through. How could he? I don't even understand it myself. Amy is radio silent. I'm not sure if she knew the truth or not. Part of me hopes she was in the dark too, because the idea that my own sister kept this from me is too painful to contemplate. I'm considering getting a DNI test to confirm everything and possibly try to find my biological mother's family. I have so many questions. What was she like? Do I have other relatives out there? Why did my dad remarry so quickly after her death? At the same time, I'm terrified of what I might discover. What if my birth mother's family doesn't want anything to do with me? What if learning about her makes me resent my adoptive mom even more? 
Part of me wants to go no contact with my parents, at least for a while. I'm so angry and hurt by their deception. But I'm also scared of losing my entire support system. Despite everything, they're the only parents I've ever known. I'm feeling lost and overwhelmed. How do I even begin to process this level of betrayal? Should I confront the rest of my extended family about keeping this secret? How do I move forward in my relationship with Amy? I would greatly appreciate any advice or words of support as I try to figure out my next steps. Has anyone else discovered they were adopted as an adult? How did you handle it? I'm trying to take things one day at a time, but I'm struggling to imagine how I'll ever trust my family again after this. Update 2 It's been a roller coaster few months since my last update, and I wanted to share some developments with you all. Your support and advice have been incredibly helpful as I've navigated this difficult situation. First, I did go ahead with DN attesting to confirm what my parents told me. The results showed that my dad is indeed my biological father, but my mom, or I guess I should say my adoptive mom, is not related to me. So the test also revealed that I have some half-siblings on my biological mother's side, which was unexpected. I've been in contact with two of these half-siblings, a brother and a sister who are a bit older than me. They were shocked to learn about my, my existence, but have been very welcoming. We've had several long phone calls and video chats, sharing family history and getting to know each other. It's been healing to learn about my birth mother, Julian, through their stories and memories. Apparently, Julian struggled with severe depression for much of her life. She had my older siblings when she was quite young and had difficulty coping with motherhood. By the time she married my dad and had me, her mental health had deteriorated significantly. My siblings say she was hospitalized several times for depression after I was born. This new information has made me reconsider some of my anger toward my dad. While I'm still hurt by the deception, I can understand why he might have wanted to shield me from the painful reality of my early childhood. Um, it doesn't excuse lying to me for 28 years but it provides some context. I also confronted my extended family about keeping the secret from me all these years. Most claimed they didn't know, but a few admitted they were aware and felt guilty for lying. My aunt dad's sister told me that the family had many arguments about whether to tell me the truth as I got older. She says she advocated for honesty but was overruled by my parents. Amy finally broke her silence about a month ago. A. She claimed she only found out the truth when she overheard our parents arguing about it a few years ago, right before her engagement. Um, apparently that's what prompted them to go all out for her wedding. They felt guilty that she was upset about the secret and wanted to overcompensate. I'm still furious with my parents, but I've had a few conversations with them to try to understand their perspective. They maintain that they were trying to protect me, but admit they handled things terribly. My adoptive mom broke down crying, saying she always saw me as her real daughter and was terrified I would reject her if I knew the truth. My dad seems to vacillate between guilt and defensiveness. The most shocking development came last week. My parents invited me over, saying they had something important to tell me. When I got there, they handed me a stack of letters. They were from my biological mother, Julian. It turns out Julian didn't die when I was a baby like I was told. She had severe postpartum depression and left when I was an infant, unable to cope with motherhood. She would send letters and birthday cards for me over the years, which my parents intercepted and hid. So the last letter was from just two years ago. Julian had terminal cancer and wanted to reconnect before she passed away. My parents never told me, and now it's too late. I'm devastated that I lost the chance to meet her and hear her side of the story. I don't know how to forgive my parents for this level of deception. They robbed me of the chance to know my biological mother and to make my own choices about that relationship. I'm struggling with feelings of grief for the mother I never knew and anger at the parents who lied to me my whole life. Jake thinks I should try to rebuild my relationship with my parents, saying they made mistakes but clearly love me. Amy wants us all to go to family therapy to work through this. I'm not sure I'm ready for either of those things. I've been seeing the therapist to help process everything, which has been helpful. But I'm still struggling with how to move forward. Part of me wants to take some time away from everyone to clear my head. Maybe travel for a while or look for a job in another city. I need space to figure out who I am and what I want without the weight of all these family expectations and lies. At the same time, I'm scared of losing the only family I've ever known. Despite their flaws, my parents did raise me and provide for me, and I'm just getting to know my half-siblings. I don't want to cut off those relationships when they're only beginning. I'm also grappling with what this means for my sense of identity. I always saw myself as the responsible, achievement-oriented daughter. Now I'm wondering how much of that was a reaction to feeling like an outsider in my family. Who am I without that role? I welcome any thoughts or advice as I try to chart a path forward. This journey of self-discovery is overwhelming, but I'm trying to stay hopeful that I'll come out stronger on the other side. Has anyone else been through something similar? How did you rebuild trust with family after a lifetime of lies? Update 3 It's been half a year since I discovered the truth about my family, and I wanted to give a final update on where things stand. After a lot of soul-searching and discussions with my therapist, 
I decided to take a job opportunity on the other side of the country. I'm now working as a marketing manager for a tech startup in San Francisco. The change of scenery has been good for me. I needed physical and emotional distance for my family to process everything and figure out who I am outside of their lies and expectations. Jake has been incredibly supportive throughout this whole ordeal. He's planning to join me in San Francisco once he wraps up some work commitments back home. We're excited to start this new chapter of our lives together. Before I left, I had one last conversation with my parents. It was difficult, but I felt it was necessary for my own peace of mind. I told them that while I understand they thought they were doing what was best for me as a child, I cannot fully forgive them for hiding my biological mother's letters and denying me the chance to meet her before she passed. That was a choice they made when I was an adult, prioritizing their own comfort over my right to know my history. My dad seemed to understand and express genuine remorse. My adoptive mom had a harder time accepting my feelings, but I think she's starting to realize the depth of hurt their actions caused. We've agreed to go to family therapy when I'm back in town for holidays, which feels like a step in the right direction. I've decided to maintain low contact with my parents for now. We exchange occasional texts and have short phone calls every few weeks. It's not ideal, but it's what I can manage at the moment. I need time to rebuild trust, if that's even possible. Amy and I are slowly reconnecting. She's apologized for her initial reaction and seems genuinely remorseful about her role in everything. We're not as close as we once were, but we're working on building a new kind of relationship based on honesty and mutual understanding. One of the most positive developments has been building relationships with my half-siblings from my biological mother's side. My brother David and sister Emily have been incredibly welcoming. They've shared photos and stories about our mother, helping me piece together a picture of who she was. It's bittersweet. I'm grateful to have this connection to her, but it also highlights everything I missed out on. I've also been in touch with some of Julian's extended family. They've filled in more details about her life and her struggles with mental health. While it's painful to learn about the difficulties she faced, it's also helping me understand my own history better. Therapy has been tremendously helpful as I work through my feelings of grief, anger, and confusion. I'm learning to embrace my complex family history rather than feel ashamed of it. I'm also working on setting healthier boundaries and advocating for my own needs, skills I realized I never really developed in my family of origin. The DNA test opened up some unexpected doors too. I discovered I have a talent for painting, something I never explored before, but because I was so focused on living up to my family's academic expectations. Um, I've been taking classes here in San Francisco and find it incredibly fulfilling. Um, I can't help but wonder if this artistic streak comes from Julian. Looking ahead, I'm cautiously optimistic about the future. This experience has been incredibly painful, but it's also given me the push I needed to take control of my own life and identity. I... See series A and by Sir Prime to leave the retail stern and end of life upper. This experience has been been Miss Halvey as well free say. I'm excited to continue exploring who I am outside of my family's shadow. Jake and I are talking about starting a family of our own in a few years. So the idea is both exciting and terrifying given everything I've learned about my own family history. So I'm committed to breaking the cycle of secrets in Creech and home built on honesty and open communication. Thank you to everyone who has offered support and advice throughout this journey. So your kindness and perspective have been a lifeline during some very dark times.